He is known for his work in phenomenology, ethics, and philosophical anthropology. He is recognized for developing the philosophical method of Edmund Husserl. He was nicknamed the Adam of the Philosophical Paradise by José Ortega y Gasset. His name is Max Ferdinand Schiller. In the small town of Munich, Germany, a brilliant mind was born. Max Ferdinand Schiller, a philosopher who would go on to make significant contributions to phenomenology, ethics, and philosophical anthropology, emerged as one of the most prominent German philosophers of his time. Influenced by the philosophical method of Edmund Husserl, the founder of phenomenology, Schiller embarked on a journey to reshape the landscape of human knowledge. Schiller's groundbreaking ideas caught the attention of his contemporaries, earning him the nickname, the Adam of the Philosophical Paradise, from the renowned philosopher José Ortega y Gasset. Gasset recognized the utopian ambitions of Schiller's phenomenology, believing that it had the potential to revolutionize the way we perceive and understand the world. Martin Heidegger, another influential philosopher, echoed Gasset's sentiments, proclaiming Schiller as the strongest philosophical force in modern Germany, nay, in contemporary Europe and in contemporary philosophy as such. Schiller's impact extended beyond the realm of philosophy. His profound teachings influenced the theology of Pope John Paul II, who dedicated his doctoral thesis to evaluating the possibility of constructing a Christian ethics based on Schiller's system. The Pope's admiration for Schiller's philosophy led to numerous articles exploring its implications. Moreover, Schiller's influence extended to his student Edith Stein, who would become a prominent figure in Catholic thought. Through the combined efforts of John Paul II and Stein, Schiller's ideas continue to shape and inspire Catholic thought to this day. As we delve into the life and ideas of Max Schiller, we uncover a philosopher whose intellectual prowess transcended boundaries, leaving an indelible mark on the philosophical landscape and influencing generations to come. Max Schiller's journey into philosophy began during his student years at the University of Munich. Originally pursuing a medical degree, he soon discovered his true passion lay in the realm of philosophy and sociology. Under the guidance of renowned thinkers such as Wilhelm Dilthey, Karl Stumpf, and George Simmel, Schiller delved deeper into the complexities of human existence. Seeking to expand his knowledge, Schiller transferred to the University of Berlin, where he continued his studies. It was during this time that he made a fateful encounter with Max Weber, a renowned sociologist who would greatly influence his intellectual development. Schiller's thirst for understanding led him to complete his doctoral thesis, titled, Contributions to the Determination of the Relationship Between Logical and Ethical Principles, in 1897. Eager to further his academic pursuits, Schiller ventured to the University of Jena in 1896. Under the mentorship of Rudolf Eucken, a highly esteemed philosopher and future Nobel laureate, Schiller completed his habilitation and embarked on his career as a teacher. His habilitation thesis, The Transcendental and Psychological Method, earned him recognition and paved the way for his appointment as a lecturer at the University of Jena in 1901. Schiller's dedication to his studies and his relentless pursuit of knowledge laid the foundation for his future contributions to philosophy. His encounters with influential thinkers and the exploration of diverse philosophical approaches shaped his unique perspective on the human condition. In his early years, Schiller demonstrated a profound commitment to unraveling the complexities of ethics and logic, establishing himself as a formidable philosopher. Max Schiller, a prominent philosopher of the early 20th century, embarked on a journey of intellectual exploration and personal growth. His encounter with Edmund Husserl, the renowned phenomenologist, in Halley in 1901 marked the beginning of a deep study of phenomenology. Despite not being a direct student, Schiller became part of the phenomenological circle in Munich, surrounded by influential thinkers such as Franz Brentano and Alexander Fander. However, Schiller's relationship with Husserl was not without its challenges. In later years, he expressed criticism towards Husserl's works, including, Logical Investigations, and, Ideas I. Despite these differences, Schiller's commitment to phenomenology remained steadfast, and he joined the Jarbuch für Philosophie und die Phenomenologische Verschung, an influential publication founded in 1912 with Husserl as the main editor. Schiller's academic journey took him to various institutions, including the University of Munich and the Philosophical Society of Göttingen. Along the way, he encountered brilliant minds like Theodor Conrad, Hedwig Conrad Martius, and Jean Herring. One of his students, Edith Stein, was deeply impressed by him, going beyond his philosophical teachings. Outside of academia, Schiller experienced personal challenges. His first marriage ended in divorce, and in 1912, he married Marit Furtwangler, sister of the renowned conductor Wilhelm Furtwangler. Schiller's personal life was further complicated by his troubled relationship with his son, Wolf Schiller, who exhibited troubling behavior and was diagnosed as a psychopath. 
As World War I unfolded, Scheler initially served in the military but was later discharged due to an eye condition. He passionately defended Germany's cause during the conflict, showcasing his dedication to his country and its defense. Scheler's first major work, published in 1913, was heavily influenced by phenomenology. Titled Zur Phenomenology und die Theorie der Sympathiegefühl und die von Liebe und die Hass, the book delved into the phenomenology of emotions, exploring the complexities of sympathy, love, and hatred. Through his intellectual pursuits and personal experiences, Max Scheler paved the way for a deeper understanding of phenomenology and its applications in various fields. His commitment to exploring the depths of human emotions and relationships offers valuable insights for navigating the complexities of daily life. Max Scheler, a renowned philosopher and sociologist, made significant contributions to the fields of philosophy, politics, and sociology during his career. In the early 1920s, Scheler began to distance himself from Catholic teaching and embraced pantheism and philosophical anthropology. He became a professor of philosophy and sociology at the University of Cologne, where he stayed until 1928. Throughout this period, Scheler's thinking took on a political character, and he fearlessly spoke out against the dangers of both national socialism and communism. Scheler recognized that capitalism was not merely an economic system but rather a calculated and globally expanding mindset. He argued that while capitalism may have had its roots in ascetic Calvinism, its true mindset originated from a modern subconscious angst. This mindset manifested in the increasing need for financial and other securities, personal safeguards, and the rational manageability of all things, ultimately subordinating the value of the individual. Scheler called for a new era of culture and values that he termed the world era of adjustment. In addition to his political and philosophical endeavors, Scheler advocated for the establishment of an international university in Switzerland. He supported programs such as continuing education and was an early proponent of a United States of Europe. Scheler strongly criticized the gap between power and mind in Germany, viewing it as the root cause of an impending dictatorship and the biggest obstacle to the establishment of German democracy. Sadly, Scheler's work was suppressed by the Nazi dictatorship just five years after his death. Despite the challenges he faced during his lifetime, Scheler's ideas on capitalism, culture, and the connection between power and mind remain relevant today. His call for a new era of culture and value serves as a reminder that we must constantly adapt and adjust to the changing world around us. Do you want to explore more philosophers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.